Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Don't Blame Me. Today's hilarious guest is Brittany Ferlin, and we talk about how a friend um, wanted a vibrator, and then that friend then invited the friend's boyfriend to get a vibrator. It's fucking weird. There's like a weird vibrator Walmart situation. And we also talk about um, a caller who's dating a much older gentleman who's estranged from his daughter who's about her age, and she's trying to facilitate them uh, having a relationship. Ooh, you're going to want to keep listening. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a new episode of Don't Blame Me, AAA. Today's wonderful and hilarious guest is Brittany Farlin. Hello. Wee, wee, wee. Yay. She's the greatest. You guys are um, really, they're, they're in for some good advice. They're like going to be like, ew, why are you hanging out with no. Brittany <laughs> Guys, first of all, if anyone fucking says that, like, fuck you. I've also known you for a long time. Yeah, we've known each other. We've been through it. We, 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 we really went through some gnarly together. stuff. We're not going to say what we it was, say, we but say. we went but through it. We so and it's not, curious. don't be weird. It wasn't a threesome or anything like that, no. guys. It that would have been like way that, better. Yeah. That would have been, been like a, br- that would have been a way, way better, better situation way better than what we went through. But anyway, yeah. moving on. Yeah, no, if anyone talks shit, I'll come for you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I know you. That's what I hate when people get upset about people. I'm like, no, 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 but you don't allowed to say that. Yeah, it's like, Funny. It's also, I'm people. super judgmental too. So if yeah. like you were terrible, I wouldn't like. Oh my you. god! I leave the room. She's like, "What a fucking cop!" No, Everybody no. unfollow. Hell nah. Believe me, you I, wouldn't be sitting you, here. No. Dead. I'm oh. pretty. I'm pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I'm she's punching myself with the mic. Declined a few people. I do. Oh shit! I really? Do. Yeah. Damn! Yeah. I feel special now. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I made the cut, bitch. Hell yes. Yeah. I haven't act, booked an audition in ages, but Dude, I got. Same. I got this. I'm good. I feel good. <laughs> this is all I have. Whatever. You were just an honor list movie, dude. Come on. Killing it. Oh, it was pretty She's good. killing I'm it, dude, guys. It. Come Ooh. on. Well, You're killing you. it, and I'm killing myself. <laughs> it's same, great. Bro. Same, same, same. Oh, my God, please. Uh, okay, guys, so this is an advice podcast uh, where you guys call in, leave voicemails, and the number that you would call is 310-694-0976. Our international listeners email audio files to meganpodcast at gmail.com, and we're going to give them advice. And also here is the lovely Melissa. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. I like your shirt today. Thank you. I say that today as if we haven't recorded multiple episodes in one day. Yeah. This is shirt number three shirt for yeah. today. Three. Yeah, I like your third shirt today. Yeah, Thank this you. Is like nice this sh- podcast is like a Lady Gaga concert. It There's is. several <laughs> changes. Change. Yeah. Yeah. Change. Quick change, quick change, quick change. That's literally what's I happening. love it. Megan's going to come down from Meat the ceiling dress. at some point. Yeah, <laughs> yes. exactly. Exactly. Out of it's a perfect. swan. I love That'll it. It'll be so good. So um, should we give some advice? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. I don't it. know if I have to give the best advice, but okay. I'll try. They're not allowed to blame us. It's in the title. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't blame, blame us. Me. Hey. Hi, Megan. So I'm 15. I'm live in the U.S. and I go to a tiny little high school um, where there's only about like 48 students and I'm about to be a sophomore but this was freshman year so now it's summer so I have a break from this but basically so my I had a dude that I was talking to for like three months and then he um, got with a girl and completely cut me off like we used to talk like every single day because we both liked each other but like we both didn't really confirm that and then he got with another girl and then he broke up well she broke up with him so he decided to go back to me and I accepted it because I'm desperate and I was like wow I'm a big girl nobody's gonna love me so like wow he must love me right no okay so we were together for a month right my friend at the beginning my best best friend the beginning she was like no it's not gonna work I don't like him I hate him basically from the beginning she shot down the relationship she was like I'm not gonna be friends with you or I can't, like, be with you if you're going to spend all your time with him. You're not, like, she didn't like that he sat at the lunch table with us, which, wow, I know high school, it's so stupid, but it's my life right now. And she was like, you didn't even, like, I asked, like, I was just like, hey, he's going to sit with us now because, like, you know, he's my boyfriend, right? And so they didn't, like, I guess I didn't ask, and I should have. I did a lot of things that were wrong, obviously, but she, that basically, we broke up a month later, shocker, <laughs> And she, like, was just the whole time, she was just like, you were right. Or she was like, I was right, I was right, I was right, I was right. Like, there's no winning with her. So basically every time that I bring up anything about a relationship now or, like, somebody else or if I'm interested in somebody or I try to give somebody advice on a relationship, she always looks at me and she's like, oh, yeah, you're one to talk or something like that. Like, she's so bitter about it. And she's always just like, I was right, I was right the whole time. And I was like, great that's great that you were right but you know what that was my feelings and I was like wow I finally found somebody who's gonna like me because I thought nobody would ever like me 
And it turns out he was just kind of an F-boy. So I was, so it turns out he didn't like me anyways. So I was like, wow, you don't think how insecure I am about the fact that we broke up and all this stuff didn't work out, much less her constantly telling me how wrong I was and how right she was. And she's like my best friend, but I don't know what to do because like she's kind of the leader and everybody in my friend group follows her. So I feel like if I like confront her for like the third time because I've confronted her so many times about it but she keeps bringing it up I feel like if I keep confronting her or I completely cut her off I'm gonna lose all my friends and again I go to a tiny school so if I lose her who am like I don't know what else I'll be left with so if you could just help me because I really don't know what to do this is it's sad, yet also somewhat comforting to know that all these years after I've graduated high school, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. And it has to be worse because now social there's social media. media and you can't get away from it. No. Like at least school sucked when you were there and you could go home and be like, it's over. Yeah. And your but razor now, phone couldn't do anything. Nothing. Yeah. Couldn't even barely text. <laughs> I was like, how do I get to the F? Oh, God, yeah. press F three <laughs> times. Yeah, snake, yeah. Snake, snake. Exactly. Snake all day. Snake 20%. Oh, Guys, we're old. Okay, get so over it. Um, but yeah. Okay, first of all, this is some mean girl shit. It is. Yeah. This is like mean girls century. And mm -hmm. I will tell you right now, I don't know what your name is, but it does not stay like this. No, it doesn't. Like it gets so much better after high school. Mm -hmm. And I know you're a sophomore. So you have what, like two more, one more year? Th three. three. Three more years. I don't even know how high school goes. I like went to three <laughs> days of it. Um, So you, you have three more years, which sucks. Yeah. But the thing is, is that like, honestly, just I don't know how to say this. I had like one best friend in high school yeah. and I would just try to focus on doing stuff outside of school. Like yeah. I would try to make friends. I would try to go to like poetry clubs mm -hmm. or writing clubs or painting. Like I was always very artistic and I would make friends with older people. Like I had like friends that were like, you know, 20 and I was like 16, like just friends that like you don't have to rely on school to give you your social yeah. aspect and I know there is so much of a social aspect yeah. in school but it's not the end of the world it's not and it's just high school I swear to god as soon as you're out of high school it you all won't goes remember away. any of it yeah 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 and you're like whoa the world sucks in high school and it yeah. does it's like being forced to work at a job that you hate with, <laughs> with a bunch of you people hate. you hate yeah in real life yeah that shit doesn't happen no. if you hate your job and you hate the people that you, you work have with, control you, you can, can leave yeah you know in high school you're like a prisoner you're you like are stuck there it's the worst. I would also say there's something that's so, and I remember especially in middle school, this was very clear to me, is the idea of friend groups. Yeah. Which is also a term that I don't know if anyone's used past high school. Like yeah. a friend group. Yeah, no. It doesn't happen. Like no. even now. It's not I normal. Think, no, like I have my friends. My boyfriend has friends and we have like mutual friends, mm -hmm. but like we're not all rolling in one same incest. First of all, the last time I had a friend group, like it was the most incestual thing in the entire Weird. world. Like everybody had hooked up with every everybody, other person. Yeah. At some point. At, yeah. yeah. But there's something I I so I had the same best friend from middle school and we had been best friends in sixth grade and both of us were in the same friend group yeah but as time kind of went on that friend group from middle school that was like so strong and so great it's not like any of us stopped being friends with each other we all just stopped being like a group of five people yeah. who were friends. We had all these individual friendships and those things have all lasted past that. Mm -hmm. But then there were girls who I was in friend groups with that I never really got to know. Right. And I think that like mob mentality of a leader and people who follow through so with that. Gross. It's so toxic mm -hmm. and it doesn't end well ever. And I think what you need to do is like, I understand the fear of that friend and saying and doing those things. But I think what you should do is not only like hang out with those girls that you're friends with one-on-one -on -one yep. without that girl yep. there, yep. but hang out with her one-on-one -on -one too. I think there's that, like you can feel that power and feeling like high of being like, I am like the ruler of this friend group. And yeah, all those she people. is a rude awakening after high yes, school. But until she, it, if she doesn't have those people around her who are like, like, like listening to everything she's saying, She's just one other normal person. Yeah. She's not going to feel as comfortable talking down to you if she doesn't have an audience of people who are guaranteed to laugh and mm -hmm. be on her side. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to humanize her and she needs to realize that. And s the same thing with everything else. And I think also it'll make you feel more in control of your friendships with people. Because when you let it rely on like an all or nothing, like either I don't rock the boat with this whole group of people 
and I'm fine or I do and I lose all of that, that's kind of, you have far more control than that. Like you, yeah. these people are individual people with their own opinions. Like yeah. you don't have to assume that they're just going to agree with everything she says. I mean, I get the follower mentality because mm-hmm. that's what people do in high school and yeah. it's gross. And the thing that sucks right now is that like as a normal adult, adult, if you had this problem with someone, you'd be able to go up to them and be like, hey, listen, I just want to tell you every time mm-hmm. you say that I'm not a good person to give advice or you tell me how how right you were about my boyfriend not being a good guy, like that hurts me. Yeah. And it really bums me out because not not only am I hurt by what he did to me, I'm hurt that you keep throwing it and in my face. And you're getting like pleasure from yeah, being right. And, and like you could say that to a person, but I know if you did that to her, then she would be like, oh, so-and-so's being weird. Like, mm-hmm. let's not be friends with her anymore because that's how shitty and catty girls yeah. are. But what you need to do is like, honestly, and I know this is going to sound really depressing, and I was really depressed in high school, but yeah. I took myself out of it. Mm-hmm. Like, I went to school, I would be like the class clown, I'd like make people laugh like a freaking monkey. I'd be like, <laughs> and like come home and then cry into a bowl of cereal. <laughs> like it was literally my whole high school, but I spent most of my time mm-hmm. in, by myself with my dog or yeah. like making, like I said, like making other friends or making hobbies and stuff like that. Like I didn't, when I was at school, I was like, fuck it, I'll eat lunch by myself or I'll go sit in like the sewing room or something like that. Like I get friends like make you feel vital and important and stuff like that, but they're not people that you're going to probably talk to after high school because they're not great friends. Like yeah. they're not people that you're like, I want to stay in touch with this person. Mm-hmm. Like I talked to one or two people, maybe, maybe from my high school, my best friend and maybe some randoms, yeah. you know, but like, that doesn't, yeah, they're not like going to be this big part of your life. And I know it's hard to see the bigger picture now, especially because you're like literally serving a prison sentence. You have two more years <laughs> yes. left of your sentence. I'm sorry. Three, three. three more years. Sorry. Just can't do math or like doesn't know what, what, Cannot what compute. You're, so whatever, like you're in third grade. You're like, dude, she's a sophomore. Okay. Yeah, totally. Same anyway. Thing. Yeah. Same thing. Um, but no, I, I get it. It's like, it's, it's going to suck yeah. for a while Yeah. and then it's going to be freaking awesome. I'll tell you, I, I, I got put on antidepressants since when I was in high school because Mm -hmm. I was so depressed and like did a bunch of dumb shit to myself. And then when I graduated and went to college and I left for California right away, I left when I was 17. As soon as I got here, I was like, so happy. Yeah. And I was like, I don't even need to be on these antidepressants. Yeah. It was like crazy. Like, I mean, I'm still on them because I tried to get off and it was miserable. I got put on a really gnarly one. Anyway, long story. So I, w- I got here and I was like, God, if I had just changed my, have I had the power to change my environment then? Yeah. I wouldn't have been put on antidepressants. I wouldn't have been depressed. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been doing all these awful things to myself. Like yeah. I would have been fine. But the thing that sucks is like, she's stuck. Yeah. It's, and it's, and I hate saying that and I don't want to make her sad by saying that, but literally just tough it out. Yeah. And take control in where you can. Cause I think that's yeah. the, the hardest thing is that you there are so many things that are out of your control and how people perceive you is out of your control and all of those things. But how you let people treat you is in your control. Yeah. And I, especially at that age, people look for victims and people who feel ashamed and embarrassed and people who really show their feelings when you hurt them. Mm-hmm. People are looking to hurt other people. Yeah. And if you show them that that hurts you, you are their target. That yeah. is automatically it. And there's also this very messed up thing of toxic friendships, which is my biggest struggle I had in high school was being in friend groups and having girls who told me they were my friend being so mean to me. So mean and talking about you behind your back. And then you're thinking like, but no, you're my friend. And in reality, that's just another bully. That's just somebody who's treating you terribly, Mm -hmm. but they're masking it under the idea of like, no, but they're your friend. So it's okay that they say those things. And also you're only a sophomore. I, I mean, I had like, I've had the same best friend all through high school, but we, like I said, we had different kind of circles that we were with. Mm -hmm. And I remember like soft, like freshman, sophomore year as like the circle I was with kind of started breaking apart and she and I were still friends, but she had her other friends. By the time we got to senior year, the people I hung out with were completely different than the people hung out with freshman year. Like it's not, it's not a sentence forever. And I also think, especially in like a small town in a small place, it's really hard. It's so hard because there are people you've known since childhood who've been friends since childhood. And I'm sure people have grown up in that town, got married there, have kids there. And all of these relationships have been like, Oh, my best friend and I've been friends for 25 years. There are also friends I've made out in LA who I consider some of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And I've known them for a far, like not as long of a time. Mm -hmm. So just don't feel like 
it's defeat and this is done and it's over. Like you've got these years left of high school and whatever these girls end up doing, which first of all, they're just not your friends. So you need yeah, to they just sound not. And good. like you were saying about you spending more time alone in high yeah. school, that reminds me so much of me in college, which it took me so far too fucking long to realize I would rather be alone than surrounded by really shitty friends. Exactly. I'd rather have not one fucking friend mm-hmm. than, than have a have bunch of bad friends. S- yeah. Ones that are terrible yeah. because as much as I can be on my own and feeling anxious and depressed, I'm going to feel 10,000 times worse if I have like 17 different pressures and people making me feel worse. Exactly. Because like, it's yeah. hard. It's just like, and you know, another thing I did, I don't know if this will help you at all is I started becoming friends with the kids that nobody wanted to be friends with. Mm-hmm. I started becoming friends. I became friends with this girl who was literally like three feet tall and she dyed her hair purple and she had like, she wore like those weird UFO pants. Oh, like yeah. she was a weird like EDM the raver chick, people. but she was an artist and she was really good. And I was like, one day I was like, I'm going to go sit next to her and talk to her because people were mean to her. They were like, oh, she dresses weird. She acts weird, whatever. And she was so cool. Yeah. And Way I became than friends the with her. And like, she was so loser. nice. Like, yeah. Because those are the people that need friends. Like, and I know it's like really cool to be popular, mm. but it's also cool not to be popular because that popularity means nothing in a couple yeah. years. So like instead of wanting to be popular, maybe like find a new group. And I know that it's hard when you're in a small, small yeah. setting because you kind of know everybody. But my school is pretty small too. I mean, not as small as yours. <laughs> but like the people that you sometimes don't think that you could be friends with are the people that you can be really good friends yeah. with. Like I became friends with that chick and I was like, this is so funny. Just It was just one day that I was sitting with her and I was in art in an art class with her and she was she was a really good artist and I was like you know what? I'm gonna like sit down and talk yeah. to her and like I like sat next to her and was like so like what's your like what's your story like where are you from and like I got to know her and then she, I, I still have this drawing she did of me she was such a good oh, artist cool. she drew me as a superhero cartoon because she felt so grateful Aww. that I talked to her and became her friend because she didn't really have any friends and I saved it and I think she's like a cartoonist now I don't know no I have to like That'd look her so up cool. and watch Mean Girls if you haven't yet oh yeah True. watch Mean Girls yeah. you're Lindsay Lohan. Let's go on to the next call. Oh, this is great. This is like love line, yeah, but like way better. better. Way better. Yeah. Hey, Megan. So I'm 18 years old and from Eastern Canada. And so I'm basically just going to give you a backstory of my history with boys so you can understand my question. Um, so when I was 14 to 15, I dated the nicest guy ever. And after 10 months, we had sex, but it was so short and awkward and horrible. And after we broke up, I liked a new guy to my town that everyone was obsessed with. And he was two years older than me. And so naturally, I was like stunned that he was actually into me and then right from the beginning I had like the worst feeling about him but I just kind of ignored it and this was like right before I was turning 16 and so like after probably the first time we hung out we had sex and I never said no but I also never was like saying yes obviously um and also he was just two years older and I just kind of thought that was what it was expected from me Uh, Every time we had sex, I never really felt comfortable and would just kind of make him do everything because I was so scared of messing up and so scared of him telling everyone that I was like a slut or something like that. So this went on and he started like kissing my best friends in front of me, but telling me it was friend kisses. I don't know who the fuck like kisses their girlfriend's friends and calls it friend kisses. But anyways, um, so I broke up. I broke up with him and then two days later I walked in on him and my best friend was giving him a blowjob so that kind of scarred me and then I later dated someone my own age while I was 17 and I felt okay having sex with them because I kind of knew that they were way more into me than I was into them and that if I did anything wrong they would still be like madly in love with me. Um, I broke it off with them and I started friends with benefits with this one guy who was a hockey fuck boy, typical Canada, and he was a year older than me and we only had sex two times. And the second time he just kind of stopped and got up and uh, then completely ghosted me. And finally, the fifth person was just some random hookup. And once again, I was so uncomfortable. And he also just randomly stopped like the other guy. So basically, my question is, how do you become comfortable with having sex and not feeling ashamed or gross for actually enjoying it? I'm completely uncomfortable with... I am completely comfortable with my sexuality and with myself, but I'm way too embarrassed to admit it and show it. So I just always end up completely frozen. And I'm also even too worried to 
about being bad at something to even give like a hand job or a blow job. And I'm not sure if this is because of my fucked up experiences or anything like that. Um, anyways, if you could just give me some advice on being comfortable and confident, that would be awesome. So I don't just end up freezing in every single sexual situation for the rest of my life. Anyways, thank you. <laughs> First of all, girl, practice makes perfect. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, Find some guy you don't really like that much. Suck the shit out of his dick. No, I'm just kidding. Wait, Worst I advice mean, ever. Are you kidding? Because I, I mean, f- okay. I don't think that's a. I mean, I'm not saying that that's a good. How old is she? She's 18. 18 okay. So we can so be young. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be like super candid. I am on that train. Are you? Of, I am. Okay. I'm not saying that yeah. you have because like I definitely like I lost my virginity when I was 16 and. There's something like when you have sex with somebody in both of your first times or whatever, yeah. there's a sense of neither of us know what we're yeah, doing. Yeah, it sounds awkward. Yeah. And then when we broke up, like, I was like, oh, shit. Like, fuck, I have to figure out, like, we still didn't really figure out how yeah, to do this yeah, in yeah. a, like, I don't know how to feel sexy having sex kind of way. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, the next guy I hooked up with, like, I was, like, relatively drunk when we hooked up. Dead. And then from there, I'm like, I didn't really care that much about him. Yeah. So it was like, that was kind of like more of a fun exploring thing. But Every guy that I've really liked, I've still been nervous to sleep with. Mm -hmm. And like, there is something about like, first of all, you've definitely been dealt a bad hand when it comes to sex so far. Like this is dude. (laughs) And I first, and I really want to say this right now, because this was really important to me. And I noted it when you said it is that please don't ever sleep with anyone or do anything that you do not want to do. Please do not ever let Mm -hmm. a man make you feel like you have to give them a blowjob or you have to fuck them because they're going to do this or that. No. Or that you feel special because he's older and that yeah, he has interested no. in you. Like, Remove yourself from yeah. the situation. I don't care how uncomfortable it makes you. I do not want to ever hear a woman say, I, I yeah. felt obligated or I didn't really want to do it and I did mm-hmm. it anyway. No, girl. Yeah. Like, please do not ever do that to yourself again. If you don't feel like doing it, Make something up. Be like, you know what? I'm actually not feeling that well. I'm going to head out. My mom's calling me. Or or, be honest and be like, you know what, dude? I'm not feeling this. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling it. I'm going to leave. And then what's he going to tell people? Oh, she just got up and said she wasn't feeling it and left. Yeah, she wasn't feeling (sighs) you, dude, because you're lame. That's why. And, And who cares what people say? Like, that's your private. That's your body. Like, you should never let anyone in your body that you don't want in your body. Like, that's not cool. I mean, I get the pressure because, I mean, it's obviously with all this Me Too movement. Yeah. There's a lot of women, and especially in Hollywood, who felt the same way you did and were like, oh, well, I don't want to say no to, like, this or that person because they're powerful and Mm -hmm. they're going to taint my image or whatever. But, like, you got to put yourself first. And you have to put faith in the other people around. Uh, First of all, like, so off, like there's there's definite mixed signals and stuff but mm-hmm. like if you say you're not comfortable with somebody and that guy starts pressuring you if that guy's friends back him up or anyone else around him backs him up yeah. that is somebody who's a corroborating a guy mm-hmm. who wanted to have unconsensual sex yep. that's it's not a matter of you're not being chill that's like no. oh they're misogynistic assholes yeah don't let them make you no. feel that way and you also need to know, like be okay with or or just have faith in the fact that there are good people in the world where if you walk away from something and say no, and also if something makes you feel uncomfortable in the moment, swear to God, it will not get better. Like if you feel uncomfortable in the moment, seven years later down the road, you're not thinking like, you know, I am glad I went through with that. You're like, no, this you're makes like, me feel sick stopped. to my stomach. And it's a sick memory. And then it makes it worse every time you have sex after that because you're yeah, reflecting upon completely. how bad it was. And then you start getting upset with yourself for thinking that this is your, like this is your fault for having done this. And I think it's like a lesson that every Everybody can learn no matter how old you are in mm-hmm. life is that if you're not into something you need to follow your intuition and you need to know that like you when you hook up with somebody it's normal to feel like nervous and oh, excited yeah. but if there's anything that isn't sitting right with you that's it's it's not it's not because of there's a difference between the feeling of feeling nervous and insecure about like your body maybe. And like, I don't know if I feel super sexy right now than being like, this doesn't feel like something I really am sure I want to do. Exactly. If you have any doubt about wanting to do something, do not do it. Yeah. Especially in a sexual situation because you will never feel better about that. You'll feel awful. 
in terms of learning how to be good at blowjobs <laughs> and fucking all this shit. Yeah. I mean, personally, I watched a lot of porn growing up. I was very mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. I watched a ton of porn. I always watch porn. I don't know why I was a very sexual child. I, like I masturbated at a young age. Like I was very open with that. And like, I mean, not open, like I didn't tell people, but like I was very like, exper- <laughs> yeah. like with yeah. my sex with myself sexually, yeah. I was very comfortable. And like, you know, but then the first time I didn't have sex till I was 18. I didn't mm-hmm. have sex with someone else till I was 18 years old. And I freaked out he had a condom on I was like I'm pregnant take me to the hospital like I was so weird okay but here's the thing like you get used to it the more people that you experience with I mean you're only 18 years old no one's going to be in bed with you and expect you to be like Jenna Jameson also none of those people you're going to be in bed with are probably super great either exactly exactly like honestly it's not that hard to fuck you can just lay there if you want to or bend over or whatever and also these guys will not know the difference exactly it's a a warm hole it's a warm hole like you throw a flower on it and find the wet spot they also last like 10 seconds exactly mm -hmm. exactly so i mean just if you want to feel like you want to learn how to give blowjobs and stuff like that i mean watch some porn Mm -hmm. like i don't know if you have a vibrator i don't know if you're yeah you're living with your parents or whatever you don't want to do that like find something to practice on or just watch i mean learning visually it's easy to learn from watching that stuff i don't know if you have access to that but another thing is is like maybe like megan said like the guy that you were dating who you weren't like that into but you felt comfortable and like you had control Mm -hmm. like those are good people to like when you're in that relationship with someone like that to practice with. Because yeah. it's like you're and not explore. worried about them judging you or whatever. And no guy's going to like give you a hard time for trying to give him a blowjob. No, yeah. I mean, as long as you don't bite his dick yeah. off, like usually guys yeah. are like pretty excited <laughs> Eddie, for you to Eddie put their wiener in the job. mouth. Yeah, like <laughs> there, there's this fear that not knowing or being naive and not experienced like isn't sexy. But yeah. I think there is some like a some lot guys of guys get turned on sexy by that. If you're like, yeah. what do you like? Like oh, tell yeah. me. And you can like, you can twist that instead of being like, hi, I don't really know how to give a blowjob and like make it be like, it's like, what do you like? Yeah. Like, what do you like? Like, like, and say those things to him. Because first of all, every guy wants a good blowjob. If that means giving you like three bullet points of telling yeah. you what he's into, because also people are into different things and like other like different things. He's would rather have a great blowjob at yeah. the end of it. And he doesn't expect you to know at the very beginning. It's like the same time, like guys going down on girls. Yeah, if they, they have never, to communicate. Holy shit. If they Faster, never slower. learned how to yeah, do that. Exactly. It's like, it's not, you got to You, you have to figure that out person them. to person. Yeah. Also like you don't give the same blowjob twice. Mm-hmm. Like you no. don't have the same, even to the same person. Like mm-hmm. everything is constantly changing and evolving. Um, in this call too, she also said that there are two guys that, just walked out in the middle of having sex with her. So how should she deal with that? Uh, I want to, that's what does that mean? What a fucking loser. Like that's so lame. Like clearly they just wanted sex from you and they weren't like getting the kind of sex that they wanted. So screw that guy. Like, it's also like, that's a guy to me. That sounds like a guy. First of all, not a stand up guy, but also a guy who's, not experienced either. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Like he should be trying to make you feel comfortable. Like if he's getting signs from you that you're not comfortable, he should be trying to make you feel comfortable. Yeah. Or maybe he was getting signs that you didn't want to do it and he was like, I'm just going to walk yeah. away. You know, well, I think which the is the biggest sign of immaturity is when someone goes into sex being like me, 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 me. Yeah, like the biggest turn the on should be how much you can like what you can do to the the other person. person. Like that's the biggest turn on. And when that's not happening, it's just, I don't think it's like sex really worth having in that sense. Um, I also just want to stress not to like single her out and make her feel bad, but like, this is you've definitely like this is not going to be all of her sexual experiences no. like you've definitely had like five Bad hand. shitty ones in a row yeah and this is not something that you're going to have to like deal with all the time so you're feeling insecure about all of this like you can completely pinpoint where all this yeah, came from like yeah. you've had multiple some weird guys yeah some weird fucking ones and I think you know I always say like everybody has like the shit that's going to be thrown at them in their lives and everybody has like I don't know like say like seven to ten things maybe you get ten things Things all at once then the rest of your life you're fucking coasting yeah some people get like one thrown at them at every couple months yeah. every couple years and then some people it all happens later so like the more shit that you have to deal with especially relationship wise you're so much closer yep. to getting the good people versus everyone who's dated someone really great and amazing shit's gonna hit the fan at some point yep but you get to have the shitty stuff out of the way and sift through all the terrible people and f- express yourself experiment with yourself you know what I mean masturbating okay I will only and I only really got into masturbating because I heard Oprah talk about masturbating 
Yes, it has to be on YouTube somewhere. There's like a clip of oh, Oprah like interviewing the woman from like the National Dr. Board of Health. Oh. Is it Dr. Ruth? The, oh, I the love Asian, Dr. Ruth. Wasn't she an Asian lady or something? Oh, not like that? No. Maybe not. It was somebody. It was like She's this like someone, it was yeah. some like from the National Board of Health and how healthy it is and yeah. good for the vagina mm-hmm. and clean and cleans it out and makes it healthy. And you don't I know some people's religious backgrounds don't you know, say that it's right. But I grew up Catholic and I still did that. And I, you know, I felt guilty the first couple of times. And then I was like, you know what? No, dude, I feel like, great. it's healthy. Yeah. I've talked to my gynecologist, like it's good for you. You need to do it. It's it, you learn about yourself yeah. and you learn to be more and more comfortable. In the and bedroom. you also learn, I think, how to be m- more independent and less dependent on men for like sexual pleasure exactly. and sexual satisfaction, confidence sexually. Yeah. Like, and that gives you confidence too. Cause you're like, yeah. Oh, I don't need your dick. I can fucking I can get pull myself this one out off. Here. Yeah. yeah. Mine's pink. It's exactly. even better. And way yeah. cuter than yeah, you. Yeah. It's got like sparkles on it and <laughs> shit. Yours is all fucking veiny and looks like a sad <laughs> Muppet. Yeah. Like it's kind of crazy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, I think, I think we covered that. Um, but yeah, know that you're going to get some good ones soon for sure. And masturbate. Yes. Okay, love it. On to the next call. On to the next oh. one. Oh, the one. Oh. God, we're so similar. So the same. Isn't that crazy? Hello. Uh, I'm 26 years old, and my boyfriend is 13 years older than me. He's about to turn 40 in a few days. And I absolutely love him. He is who I want to spend the rest of my life with. Um, and I want to have babies with him as soon as possible because I'm, like, baby crazy. But that's besides the point. Um, my boyfriend actually um, was 16 when he had his um, had a baby. Uh, the girl that he was with in high school um, got pregnant, and she kept the baby to full term, and has kept like didn't give it up for adoption. So she still um, has this daughter, and my boyfriend has not been a part of her life. Um, For the first four years of her life, he was there, but him and the mother had so many disagreements that it was really hard for them to um, agree. And they did go to court over visitation rights, and for a while, she was um, agreeing to them. But once she got a new boyfriend, she kind of edged him out, and... Uh, there was kind of nothing he could do at that point. He didn't have any more money to be going to court anymore, and um, he was in college, so it was really hard for him to fight for her. Uh, I know he probably could have fought more, but he didn't. Every year, he has written to his daughter, um, although he's had to send them to the mother because he doesn't know how to get them to the daughter. Um, and I don't who even knows if the daughter's ever seen them. The mother just says she'll write you when she's ready or she'll contact you when she's ready. Um, My boyfriend tells me about this story before we start dating because he wanted to make sure I was okay with it. And I told him, of course, I'm okay with it because I want to be with you. Um, So I look for his daughter on social media, as many of us would do these days, and I find her. She is only three years younger than me, and she's a dancer just like I am, so we have mutual friends. I reached out to our mutual friend, and she refused to help. So now I kind of don't know what to do, and I really want to help him get in contact with her because I want to have kids with my boyfriend or when we, whenever we get married, and they will be my kids' half-sisters. So I really want this to happen, but I don't want to, like, overstep because this isn't my life. This isn't my daughter. So I don't really know how to help him get in contact with her. He is not social media, so she has no way to reach out to him in that capacity. Um, But we do follow each other on social media, me and his daughter. So it's very strange. So if you have any advice, I'd love to know what I can do to help him. Well, I can definitely speak on this. Oh, my God. Great. I can't at all. My fiance is 56. He has an ex-wife. His kids are 22 and 20. And I will tell you one thing right now. Mm -hmm. People get really mad when you get involved. That's what I was. And I hate to say it, but it's like I've I came in the picture and I had a great relationship with the kids. And, um, you know, I'm only 10 years older than them. And, you know, we I would help, you know, the one with auditions and whatnot and everything was fine. And then one day, like it was just like flipped, like some crazy stuff went down and. And so now, like, I tried to, like, reach out to them and reach out, you know, to 
tell them to, you know, they've had a lot of back and forth. There's been a lot of drama mm-hmm. between um, them and my and my fiance on social media, unfortunately. But I try to always like mend the bridge. And all I've gotten in back from that was hate yeah. and from both, you know, from both kids and people just being like, you know, you need to just stay out of it. And mm-hmm. I know this is so hard because you hate seeing your partner in pain and sad. And I hate that, too. Mm-hmm. It's like very hard to sit there and watch someone you love be hurt by his children. Um, but it's not your problem. I don't know how to say no, that it's nicely. Not her it's not your it's battle. Not. And it's only going to cause more problems in the long run if you involve yourself and put yourself in the middle because then it's like you're going to be one the to one blame. to blame. Exactly. I think it's really between your your boyfriend and his daughter to work it out and as much as like I think it's great that you guys follow each other because that shows that she's like supportive of you and and I think it's wonderful that like I mean I don't know if you've reached out to her and just said hey you know I'm dating your dad and he really cares about you and it'd be nice if we could all grab lunch or something and like kept it really light and like that like that's fine Mm -hmm. but then after that like once they connect you might just want to take a step back because if anything goes wrong with that you're just going to be the one that gets Mm -hmm. the brunt of it I mean I've gotten so much hate on social media from from mm. people who are like, you're not you haven't been in their lives long enough to comment on this and blah, 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 blah and all this stuff, even though I lived with them and was yeah. there, you know, whenever when all this bad things happened, I was what was happened right in front of me. And I was like, you know, I guess it's just really hard to stand back and watch someone you care about be hurt. But you have to kind of just take a back seat to this and let the, them figure it out because it's just not your place at this point. You yeah. Know? And she also. I think the the advice I had up until the, when you said you guys follow each other on social media was if her mom had potentially hid her dad from her for her, yeah. from her whole life and she didn't know her dad was trying to get in contact with her. But if she follows you, this is her friend said, no, I'm not going to help you with this. Yeah, I'm 100 percent sure her friend asked her. Yeah. And then she said, said no. no. You have to give her the choice. Yeah. And it I, is fifth. It is 100 percent her choice if she wants to have a relationship with yeah, him. Yeah. And no offense to him, but it is all on her if she yeah, wants that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all her just decision. just because he is her dad and he did fight for her and wanted to be in her life before. It didn't end up that way. He wasn't there for her. And if she doesn't want him there, that's fine. But that's her call. Any hurt that he feels from that. He needs to deal with on his mm-hmm. own. And not put on you either. No, exactly. Yeah. And like it's putting you in a position where now I don't I also feel like like as his girlfriend, like it's so sweet that you really want to help him it's and all really that stuff. It's really sweet. And but I like, get it. You have followed, you found them on social media. Can't he make a social media account and like take some initiative there? Like there's something a little twisted to me where I'm like, okay, he doesn't have social media. So you're the one contacting them. I'm like, if he really wanted to like reach out to his daughter, he'd make a yeah, fucking Instagram. Yeah, it's not that hard. Or, you know, even get her email or whatever. Yeah. There's got to be, a, I mean, there's just so many ways to reach people yeah. these days. Facebook. She's 23. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The daughter's 23. So he could have reached out as soon as she turned 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, like she, she, listen, if she doesn't want anything to do with him, there's, you need to just accept it. And there's nothing she can say that's going to make her be like, oh no, I do want to. And there's just because he's her biological father, he wasn't her dad mm. growing up. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Even if he wanted to be. Yeah. yeah. And like, it just didn't happen. Sad. And she lost out on having him around in the early parts of her life. But if she wants him around in the later parts of her life, that's on her. She gets to call the shots, not him in that situation. And I think it's also important for you to know that uh, he, hit her and her being if she chooses not to really acknowledge him as a part of her family it's not reflected on you and she doesn't owe it to you for Mm -hmm. when you have kids and kids who have half siblings Mm -hmm. my I have a half brother my half brother and I like I we only started having like more of like a relationship relationship and like talking and like being friends on him and his wife share a uh, Facebook, which I think is the cutest thing that in the entire really world. Cute. It's like their name slash dead. like this dead. slash this. And we I do only, everything together. Yeah, literally. And yeah. I only really started having like more of a relationship with them in the last couple of years. And like growing up as a kid, you're really kind of at the mercy of what the adults in yeah. your life let you in on. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. also like 
what they who you who they let you have relationships with Mm -hmm. and so i think if she was fresh 18 this daughter was fresh 18 and all that stuff she's had a couple of years on Mm -hmm. her own Mm -hmm. and she if she makes this decision knowing all of the facts knowing that he tried to be a part of her life she he needs to be okay with that Mm -hmm. even if it's not a malicious feeling it's more just I don't know you. Like, I don't know this guy. Yeah. Like, sure, you were like, were my biological father, but like, I, you haven't been in my, I don't know this person. So I think as if he can do, like, just reach out to her one final time and, and know that that's out there, then the then door is open too do. of yeah, being like, and open. I understand if this is not something that you want now or ever but like it's there's no expiration date on this if you ever want to have a relationship and what capacity and how how you want that to be it's on uh, I will do whatever you're comfortable with or nothing at all and then from there I think you guys need to drop it because yeah. she's got her own life mm-hmm. and, and you have your own lives together yes. and you just started on this you know you just started this journey with him and you focus on your life mm-hmm. with him like make a beautiful life with him yeah. and she has nothing to do with your yeah. future kids exactly and exactly. yeah yeah you just gotta let him I don't know let his actual desire to be in her life he you need he to let to him do. show yeah. that yeah otherwise it's not your job and for her as if i was the this the daughter i would be like my dad wants to fucking talk to me so much why is his girlfriend reaching out to me yeah like why aren't you doing that mm-hmm. and i i know that that's coming from a place of maybe it's hard for him and all that but you also have to like let him yeah yeah if you really want them to have a relationship he needs to do the hard brunt work Okay, guys. Well, Brittany texts. You guys can't see it unless you're watching the video. Yeah. We're going to go on to a quick break. This episode of Don't Blame Me is brought to you by me jacking off my own dick, reading reviews that you guys have left on the Apple Podcast app. Um, because it just makes me feel really good. So this is what I need to do. Sometimes it's all about self-love and sometimes you just need to read aloud nice things people say to you and put them out for other people to hear and then tell other people to listen to those nice things that other people said and that it's not enough and that you need more people to say more nice things. I'm desperate and needy and want validation all the time. So this review says love, love, love. Can you tell why I picked it? Also, it says love like like with a capital L and then the lowercase, then love in all caps, and then L-U-V. So I get it, like switching it up. Watched an episode on YouTube for the first time and absolutely fell in love. Was skeptical to watch when I would get the notification on YouTube because I thought I'd never be into podcasts, but it made me laugh, think, and realize things about myself and life that I never did before. It's made me feel so not alone in the world because I can relate to some of the problems and it makes me feel normal. I love how you are unapologetically yourself and so real and honest about everything. I've watched your beauty cooking lifestyle videos for a while and I'm glad I found these gems. <laughs> Thank you so much. I wish I could like read out loud how many exclamation points there were, but I just feel like that's a little too much. Also, as I read this lot, I was like, fuck, I'm just like... I am just, yeah, I'm just jacking off my own dick here. Um, But seriously, guys, it really does mean a lot. And um, I love to know what episodes you guys really gravitate towards, which guests you really love, the kinds of questions that you love. And um, if there's a guest that you particularly loved them on, you can like let us know in the review that you're like, hey, I loved the episode with Lucas. Have Lucas back. So um, please let us know that kind of stuff because it always makes me excited when you guys like people that I like too. And I'm like, (laughs) cool, great. Everyone loves Taylor. Taylor's great, sick, awesome, love it. So, um, please leave us a five-star review on the Apple podcast app because I'm desperate for attention and love. <laughs> Think of it as your good deed for the day. And um, back to the episode. Oh, Megan, you got me in the eye. With my jizz from my, from my penis from jacking myself off with compliments. Compliment come. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, hey. Okay, guys. We are back from our break and we're going to hop in to the rest of the calls. Yay, calls. Hey, Megan. So I'm a 20-year-old sophomore in college and I just got into my first relationship. Not ever, but since I've been in school, we've been dating very short, like two months. And I have a question for you. So my best friend, I love her. She's graduating this year. I'm so proud of her. Live your best life. But her and her, boy, her boyfriend has this weird thing where he doesn't like to have sex while she's on her period. Well, that's fine. Whatever. Kind of an asshole thing to do. But live your best life. So she was texting me. She goes, I want to buy a vibrator to satisfy this need while I'm on my period. I said, girl, get it. I'll go with, 
home for Easter. So I was like, girl, I'll go with you when I get back to school. Anyways, she calls me Sunday night and goes, hey, what kind of vibrators do you have? And I said, why? And she goes, oh, because I'm at Walmart right now. Why Walmart? I do not know. But she's at Walmart with not only her boyfriend, but my boyfriend. She brought my boyfriend along to help her buy a vibrator. I don't know if it's weird to you, but it's weird to me. It weirds me out that she went with my boyfriend, and my boyfriend got me my vibrator. She goes, I wanted to know what kind you had. Like, just take a fucking picture of the box. Like, I don't know if this is would weird you out if your boyfriend went with Ashlyn, your friend, to go buy her a vibrator. But it weirded me out. And I'm like, girl, I love you to death. I really, really do. But, like, you got to think things through more. So I'm feeling mildly annoyed. It's the next day. I slept on it. I'm not as mad. But I was wondering, if you could tell me if I'm crazy, you say yes. I haven't told him crazy before, but tell me if I'm crazy for thinking that the first, like, the first guy I've been in love with in, like, five years, I think it's weird that she took him to buy the vibrator with her. But wasn't her boyfriend with them, too? Yeah. So it's not as bad. I mean, it's weird, but at least, like, it wasn't just the no, girlfriend that's weird. Also, she threw the in there being like, how would I feel if my friend Aislinn went with, like, Mott's to buy a vibrator? Okay, first of all, dead that Walmart it's, sells vibrators. Yeah, she's yeah. like, I dead no that. idea. Like, they're massagers. They're discount oh, vibrators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Sex my city. gosh. I'm dead. It's shaped just, like the fucking smiley it's face. so <laughs> weird, I, weird. I just, I want to, like... <sighs> It would have been really bad if it was just her, your boyfriend and your friend. But like, it's but a weird enough situation that like, wouldn't your fiance text you and be like, hey, so is it hit me up to go vibrator shopping with them? I'd be like, what the fuck are you See, doing? But he Get would, out of he here. He would text yeah, you that, he would right? Totally text because me it is super me. weird out of the, like, the blue. It is weird. So I would say like, even like my boyfriend would even say like, if someone like a friend of my friend or like my friend's boyfriend, he had never met, followed him on Instagram. He'd call me like, hey, uh, someone follow me on Instagram. Can I accept this? Not even like a permission way but I think like I'm just so curious why you found out through your friend and not your boyfriend like, yeah that's not cool and I think it's more of an issue with your boyfriend like I'd be like why'd you even tag along for this unless your friend invited your boyfriend or maybe the the, the, the boyfriends, boyfriends are hanging friends, out okay, they were yeah. hanging out that's and the they thing. like went to Walmart okay so that's not as bad oh if maybe was, they went to Walmart and they didn't know she was buying a vibrator if the and boyfriends are vibrator. friends and they were just all hanging out and went to Walmart and it just happened to be she was like oh let me get a vibrator that's not weird at all and I wouldn't mm-hmm. be mad at that no cause completely if, if, so if they're friends like just let it go because he they were probably just all chilling you know what yeah, I mean if he was like un- unassuming and went into this yeah. and didn't know that the goal was like yeah. buying a vibrator that happens like you're all just hanging out and you're yeah. like let's go do some shit and then you're like whoa this place has vibrators I yeah. mean that happens to me all the time <laughs> <laughs> every day <laughs> me, me 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 in Palm Springs downtown Palm Springs you always wind up you're like what is this store <laughs> I met a subscriber Dead. in a sex store in like, Palm Springs and I was like I she's like let's take a picture I'm like let's go outside retro vibrators you're like yes. what is this uh, weird anyway yeah that's the best advice I could say and if he treats you well if he's a good boyfriend you know he's not shady he's not doing anything weird yeah, and I also think, like, like you said, her boyfriend was there too. So it, I, I don't get like suspicious vibes from no, it. No. I just get kind vibes. of like weird, mo- weird <laughs> mood vibes from yeah. it. Where I'm kind of like, don't you feel a little awkward about that? Like, it's just a little, it, to me, it just sounds like, of three people who didn't know what but, situation yeah. they were getting into. Exactly. They probably went to Walmart to get like sandwiches or yes. snacks or something. And then yeah. she was like, oh shit, I could get a vibrator here. Oh yeah. shit, I'm on my period. Yeah. 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 I need to fuck myself. Yeah, it's weird. So yeah, I would say that. I mean, I think like the, the best thing to do would be to like ask your, like ask how it happened. Like ask your boyfriend ask your boyfriend I mean I, I, you can ask your friend too but I would especially start with your boyfriend like so how did that come about because I think it's a little odd and then also I don't know if they're close because yeah. like there are some like my boyfriend and I like he is I've got guy friends and guy friends who are in relationships and like we're like not like we're like c- friends like all mm-hmm. like as like a circle like oh this is like people we double date with yeah and so like at what level are they friends in a way yeah. that it wouldn't be as weird because it would definitely be super fucking weird if like Mots and Aislinn went to go get a vibrator. I can't. I love the that fact she that she said that Aislinn. is so. That's just like, yeah. why would you do that? Like, why would you bring that up to me? Yeah, it's so. Like, I mean, but in, like I'm saying, I bet the guys are boys and like they're homies and like they were probably just chilling. They're playing she, video yeah. games and they went to go exactly. get snacks. She tagged along. Yeah. And then she's like, oh my God, let me get a vibrator. Yeah. Here. So not that weird. Yeah. Also, maybe she just wanted to like, like she did that on purpose in front of 
um, her boyfriend because she knows that your boyfriend got you your vibrator. So she's, she's like, like, oh, he's a chill, up. cool guy. Step your game up, yeah. Bro. And yeah. so now he can be held accountable in front of like a guy who like did this already. Maybe yeah. that was it. Like maybe your boyfriend was there to be proven as a cool dude example. Yes. Should we go on to the next call? Yeah. yeah. So I'm 25 and just for um, a bit of context. So like two years ago, I had a fuck buddy, like for real, like we didn't have feelings, any of that. We would just have sex sometimes and then like leave. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that ended because he got back with his ex, which was fine. I was just like, okay, cool. And then we didn't really talk very much after that until recently. But, uh, so in the meantime, he had a kid with his ex whom he got back with, but then they are no longer together. And, um, he reached out to me a couple of days ago, um, pretty much saying that his ex, the mother of his child, won't let him see his kid. And, you know, it's probably for the best. Like, he, she's better off without him and everyone's b better off without him and he should just kill himself and stuff like that. So, of course, I was like, no, of course not. Like, you shouldn't do that. Here's you know, suicide hotline, here's the text line, here's um, numbers of therapists, here's the number of my therapist, like, please get help, get help, please. And he's refusing to do it, but um, he reached out again yesterday, um, doing the same thing, like, hey, I'm going to end it, I'm going to end it, um, all these things, and making me feel like responsible for if he does or doesn't and I just want to ask you if there's anything else I can do like I don't want to block him obviously but I don't like the position he's putting me in um so any advice is appreciated thanks Honey, it's a tough situation. You can take a horse to water, but you cannot make no. him drink. Okay, and you are not responsible for anyone taking mm -mm. their own life. Okay, no. you're not sitting there telling him to do it. You're not giving him a gun. You're not doing anything. You're being there for him. You gave him resources. You're being a friend. And first of all, I know it takes a lot of a toll on you as a yeah. person too. To, I mean, if you're in therapy, like you said, I gave him my therapist number. Like you must be having you know, stuff going on for yourself and it's not healthy to have someone bringing you down. Number one. Number two, a lot of people who say they're going to kill themselves constantly usually yeah. don't. Like I grew up with someone that used to say that all the time yeah. as a way to manipulate me and mm -hmm. I let it really affect me and it really screwed me up for a long time in my life and then obviously they never did it. They're still around. Yeah. So what you can do is offer your help and say that you care and you want to help them get better but Literally do not let them make you feel responsible mm -hmm. for them because everyone is only responsible for themselves. Yeah. And I think I think I get your fear because no matter how much you feel, no matter how technically you're not responsible at all, there is a feeling of guilt and also a feeling of if someone's coming to you and confiding in you, you worry. And especially if he's just your fuck buddy where you don't have like... An you don't know, what, yeah, connection. or a ton of like knowing of the rest of his life. Right. Then there's that fear. Am I the only person who knows this? Mm -hmm. And you, I think you, not that you need to block him, but I think that you need to preserve your own mental health because exactly. this will take a toll on you. And if you're really afraid that he's going to follow through with any of these threats, you can alert, a, like, alert, they can, you, is it nine? Is it the call it, call nine, nine one, one? one? Yeah. Yeah. And say, I, th this person is been saying they're suicide. threatening suicide yeah. and they're in danger of themselves mm -hmm. and you can put that out there and then you don't have to continue to talk to him. And I'm not saying go as far as block him, mm -mm. but you need to, you don't get sucked into this. No, I mean, you're not a therapist. No, and you can't, there is literally nothing you can say or do. The only thing that is going to happen is that you are going to get more and more and more invested in this. If he knows 
that you've you've brought all these resources exactly like you said like you can bring him to that and if he does chooses not to do that That's on you him. can't force him to do that mm. and so you've suggested professional help if he t- you can tell him this if you're not willing to get professional help I am not willing to listen to you and to talk to you through this unless you take the necessary steps with a therapist or anyone like that like until you've done that I can't be your friend support system because what I can provide you is far less important and helpful than what medical professionals can. Exactly. And if he really wants to be have you to be able to talk to about this, then he's going to have to go out and do those other things. Yeah, he needs but I to think help if you're, himself. Yeah, if you're really afraid, and I think you should, call 911 yeah. and report that. And also, especially, I also knew somebody who mm-hmm. in high school was very much everything was a threat of mm, that. And everything. even, a, even a guy I dated when I got old, like when I was in my twenties, like everything that I, if I did anything wrong, it was just like, Oh, this is a reflection. Even if I did anything, if I got upset about anything, it was, Oh, you hate me. I should just kill myself. Like, why am I even here? And then that becomes like a, you can no longer feel things or think things because mm-hmm. everything turns into, I have done this to you and this is how you feel. And like you said, both of those people are still, still around. Here, yeah. And so I think also calling 911 on him either is it really it's going to completely help him or it's going to him it's going to be the reality check of like yeah no I didn't this is not actually what's happening in my life like mm-hmm. this isn't I don't actually feel this this was an empty threat but I think for your conscience I think you need to do that step otherwise if something I think you're always going to wonder, should you have done that? And I think, I think if that's he threatens it again, for yeah. sure. If he gets on the phone with you and says, you know, or messages you and says, I'm going to end it, whatever, you need to take a picture yeah. of that and you need to call the authorities and say, hey, listen, I have this friend. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then after that, it's like, you know, what is yeah. he going to do? You tried and, exactly. and you yeah. helped and you, you tried to help. Everything you did everything you could. You could and, you know, I'll tell you something. If someone really wants to kill themselves, they're going to do it. Yeah. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, once people have made that decision in their minds, Mm -hmm. it's something that they usually do. And I've known a few people, unfortunately, who have done that. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I will say that almost all of them had in common was that, like, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Well, And and a lot of them are very to themselves mm -hmm. and very quiet. And they don't usually tell a lot of people. I mean, you'll see maybe they're sad a little bit and it's not everybody. But Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, like the people that I've known, it's people who kind of kept to themselves and they made sad posts here and there. And then it happened. You know, they didn't warn anybody ahead of time or they didn't reach out for help. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's important that he's reaching out for help. I think that's a good sign that he, you know, really does not want to do it. He you wants know. someone to hold, to yeah. know that he's thinking these things and hold him accountable. Um, yeah. And, and, and know that someone's there for him. I yeah. feel like, I feel like he's lonely and he's he just using really extreme, extreme measures. measures to feel comforted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you guys on that. Yeah. yeah. So if you call 911, they'll do an evaluation and they won't discharge him until they feel like that they're either stable or mm-hmm. they've put him on medication mm-hmm. um, so that they're no longer a threat to themselves or anyone yeah. else. Yeah. And I would also say, I know we didn't, <laughs> we did an episode before where we talked about suicide and, I gave the same advice of being like, you should call 911. And somebody else said, you should warn that person if they do that again, that you're going to call. Of course. I'm not a huge fan of the idea of warning that person because in the small chance that they are, or whatever, in the chance, small or big, that they are being serious, telling someone, hey, you told me you're going to kill yourself. I'm going to call 911 on you there's a chance that can send that person over the edge because they don't want that. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to assess the situation and without freaking somebody else out by telling them that you're going to do this. It's like the, that's going to make a terrible analogy. I'm not going to make that. I caught myself, but like you can't, it's suicide is something, I mean, mental health in general, there's, so many people, and they, I say this as somebody who like constantly is struggling with mental health. Mm. So many people deal with the same things and they deal with them super differently. Everyone. Some people are predisposed to being very depressed and having suicidal thoughts and they can go through the same things as somebody else and somebody else can be completely fine. It's not necessarily, you, there's situational depression, there's clinical depression. Your situation doesn't, re, like your actions don't result in that. Right. That's something too, like you need to treat this as a situation. Like this is somebody if this is all real and like, this is how he's really feeling. This is somebody who 
these feelings would have been brewing for a while. This mm-hmm. is like a sense of worthlessness that started, might not even have started from the issue with like cust- like being around this kid and all of that stuff, but you need to treat it delicately mm-hmm. and not in a blamey kind of like, yeah. hey, if you do this again, I'm going to yeah, go no, call the cops on you. Don't be mean. Don't yeah. be rude. Obviously, the person's hurting and struggling, mm-hmm. but definitely draw your boundaries with yourself mm-hmm. because you don't want to be pulled into something where it starts affecting your mental health. Yeah. Like it's, it, I mean, I've seen it happen to so many mm-hmm. people. Like it happened to me when I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. I had someone in my life who was constantly threatening suicide and I used all the strength in my whole body at like six years old to be like, please don't, please don't, yeah. please don't. You know, but begging them and I'd cry about it and like scream and plead with this person and they're still here and mm-hmm. I have an anxiety disorder. <laughs> yeah. And I'll have it for the rest of my life, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it's like you have to really draw lines and know what and you're capable of, of doing yeah, exactly. and you've done more, more than what you're, yeah more yeah. than enough and know that like it's you've been brought into a situation but it's not your responsibility and you've done you've done so much for it exactly oh it's a tough one and that i'm sorry really hard. yeah sorry you're going through that really dude. Sorry. not cool not fun Okay, guys, we are on to Producer's Corner. Ooh, and what's this, that? Oh, my God. So good that you asked. I was just going to tell you. <laughs> so this is when Melissa will, um, we've got either a callback. So somebody who has previously called it in and they're updating us on like follow up. Of Ooh, what happened, I love follow up. Or we've got somebody who listened to the advice I gave in a previous episode and was like, yeah, no, that's not that great. Like, so, Thanks for ruining my yes. life, and Megan. So I just wanted to call. <laughs> or they're giving or their they're own They're giving personal. their own input, which yeah. is great, especially in situations where I'm like, yeah, I don't know what's happening. So then we also can find other people who have apparently been through very similar, very specific situations. So. That. What do we got today? We've got uh, someone calling in that has had experience. So Ooh. this is from episode 33 with Kingsley mm-hmm. when uh, the girl said that her boyfriend's dick ripped. Oh my God. Whoa, Wait, dude. shut up, shut up. I wonder if this Whoa, is the dude. same girl who slid into my DMs. And oh, I didn't even, t- I, okay, I'm not going to say, I won't say it specifically. I'll ask her. But she, see, that was my question. So I had mentioned on the podcast and then she DM'd me and she goes, girl, just listen to the podcast. Like FYI, yes, a dick can rip. And FYI, my vagina did rip his dick. <gasps> and then I was like, wait, will you tell me the story? And she's like, well, how detailed do you want me to get? And I was like, very fucking detailed. She and she sent me all of it. So I'll ask her if I can, um, I'll DM her like, oh and see maybe for the next I wonder episode. if this is her. I wonder. I I'll hear. I'll be. know if it's yeah. a similar dick situation. So... Um, I'd say like six months ago, my boyfriend and I had sex without a condom. We're 18 and 19 years old and, um, his dick ripped and it actually ripped inside of me and he bled inside of me. And it was the scariest thing that you could ever think of, especially like we're like so young and we're like, oh fuck, this is we're fucked and this isn't gonna work and blah 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 so um what's it called all right so we just didn't have sex for about three months and it yeah it kind of sucks but then at the same time like we both learned how to pleasure each other in different ways and we didn't wait six months we couldn't wait six months because we're both horny teenagers but um, we used a condom and everything worked out like perfectly fine. Nothing, like there was nothing wrong with it after. We were just very, very careful and we used a condom and everything worked out perfectly fine. So I'm just letting the girl know when she talks to her boyfriend, or I mean her husband, and just like they have to communicate because that's what me and my boyfriend did and like everything's fine now and we're all good and we can have sex without a condom and I'm on birth control I want to just let you know that right now because I didn't say that before but yeah um we use protection and sometimes we won't but when we don't nothing's like everything's been fine now it's just so it was still very touchy um and like what do you call it um tender sore delicate like, I was very delicate with it um, when we first did it after it ripped, but everything's good now. So, yeah, I just want to let her know. Okay, thank you. Holy oh shit. Oh my God. And now I'm Googling ripped dicks. Yes. Right also, now. Also, now I know this is a different girl than the one who slid into my DMs. So now we officially have three people who have 
ripped, ripped dicks. dicks. Oh my God. I didn't know it could rip. Well, I'm also, now I'm, I, I, I feel better because my reaction in that episode was very much like, no way, this isn't a thing. So like, even I accidentally kind of assisted in the on, feeling of, very, she's looking up rip dick, rip like dick. feeling very like, I don't know. I, I don't think I came across as judgy, but I think I was like really shocked. But now I'm like, shit, this is a thing. It's just a fucking thing. I don't see any pictures of it. Oh, uh -huh. all they see are butts. Okay. But I think so, you, so you rip like the four, it's like it's usually four. uncut dicks. Yeah. And it's like the frenulum, the same thing that you have under your tongue that connects the penis to the foreskin oh and that rips. Oh my God. That was also the girl who DM'd me. She was like, what you guys didn't talk about or what the girl failed to mention is just how much blood it is. She said it's an insane amount of blood. So you need to get circumcised if you can. Not as much. I mean, it's just, I. it's also like the, what so... I'm just, whatever. I'm not ratting out this girl's Instagram name. What she had said that the reason why is so like they also had sex, I'm assuming without a condom and like she just wasn't wet enough and that's, that's what that it. is. If you're too dry. And it, I'm like, like so this is friction. a lesson for men. Foreplay. Like, for, yeah, foreplay and come if on, not, get like, her get into some, this. Get some, uh, what is it? Lube. Lube. Yes. Some like, lube, lube, you, lube. Need to, you need to prep the lube situation before you just stick your dick in yeah, it because you, you might rip it. You don't want to stick a hot dog in a sandcastle. No. That's oh, nasty, what? right? Gosh. I also told my boyfriend about this and he was like, what? This? Like, he didn't even know dicks could rip. My fiance broke his dick. Uh, how do you break a dick? He was fucking dick? some porn star back <laughs> in the day. And fucking her from behind, and they were fucking ramming. Oh, and, he and she turned a little no. bit, mm -hmm. and he pulled all the way out and went, fucking broke it. Stop like it. he said, like an arm. Yeah. <gasps> like it breaks, and it gets black and blue, and it's oh. swollen, and it, he couldn't fuck for two months. Yeah. Like I, that's like a situation you cannot fuck. Yeah. Like he couldn't even barely You couldn't pee. even get hard. You nope. can't get hard. Nope. He it couldn't just even break it. So you just pee. have like a, like a swollen it's plastic dick. purple. And, like a little bent and broken and it has to heal. No. And I'm like, way. do they put a cast on it? Like I was asking all these Did questions. Did you go to the like, doctor? I'm like, yeah, of course you went to the doctor, but they don't they can't do anything. You oh have to let gosh. it heal. It's like if you hurt your ribs or something like that, you can't yeah. do anything. Yeah. You just gotta like, let just it heal. Just don't use it. Yeah, don't use it. Let it heal. He said it was the worst two months How of his life. How do you life. pee? It carefully. Carefully. He oh said it God. hurt like a bitch. That sucks. Yeah. I learned about it from Grey's Anatomy. Isn't oh. that crazy that you can break your penis? I'm like, there's not even a real bone in there. It's yeah. just like a cartilage, muscle. right? Yeah. Muscle, cartilage? Yeah. yeah. Muscle. Tendon. I don't know what the fuck it know. is. Anyway, it feels great. Penis. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, I, I'm I familiar. Like it, whatever I just it is. don't, I don't know, know what it is. is. Yeah, no, exactly. Really, exactly. I see it a lot. I just like, I don't know what you do. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. You look Gold star. You're nice. I like you. Give it a little pat on the head. Oh, okay, this Bye. is weird. All right, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know either. <laughs> like, oh, my penis. God. oh my god! Oh my gosh! Well, thank you for being on this episode. Dude, thanks for having me. I feel like I just got like a therapy Dude, session I, for free. I feel like I did too. Like, Whoa. I feel so zen and great and so good. You're so helpful too. You're so helpful, and it's actually really nice to like meet other girls. You're both lovely. I you don't speak much, you. but you're lovely. <laughs> <'Cause> you're <laughs> um, like. But like, it's nice to just have nice people. Thanks for having me. Oh my me. god, I love you. I love you. Where, where can people check you out on the internet? Um, um, just at Brittany Furlan on all things and I'm trying to do a blog so if you guys are on Tumblr I'm gonna follow you I have a Tumblr now I mean I've had it for a while mm -hmm. I just got reactivated on there and I started talking about like real life things that I'm going through I mean probably not the best it'll probably all come back to haunt me but I don't really no. care I don't I like really that. care at this point like, yeah. I'm just like okay yeah they're like ooh she's um, it's, um, <laughs> I don't even know what it's She's, called. It's very new. I don't know what my Tumblr is. It's is it called your name? Happy Sad Girl. The name dot of the blog Tumblr? is ha So it's just Brittany Furlan dot Tumblr. It's, there's oh, a there link to it on my Instagram page. Okay. Yeah. So Great. there's Put a link. The yeah. Brittany Furlan dot Tumblr dot com. Amazing. Backslash. I love it. Yeah. Well, great. Thanks, guys. Oh, my God. Thanks so much for being and here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> if you guys want to check out Melissa and I, uh, we'll have all of our uh, social handles in the show description and YouTube as well. And if you want to subscribe to this podcast and you are watching the YouTube video, you can go to don't blame me dot show. But we're also on iTunes. You can check it out there. Podcast app. And um, yeah, if you're not an Apple user, go to don't blame me dot show. Figure out where you can listen to us. Subscribe, and subscribe, guys. Get it, get it in your phone or your device immediately. And then if you haven't watched on YouTube, go watch it on YouTube because it's great. Yay! And um, yeah, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Don't blame me 
is a production by me, produced, directed, and edited by Melissa DeMonts. Post-production sound by Chris Henry, production assistant Julie Carley, and music by Giacomo Picasso and Ryan Hunter. I'll see you guys next week. And don't blame me if your life, you know, completely fucks up before then. <laughs> oh.